Star Wars fans, D23 was yesterday, and we got a ton of new content to break down to speculate about, but I had to start with the Tales of the Jedi trailer, because oh my goodness, was this thing insane. And I'm sure you've seen my shirt already. It says Merry Sithmas. And it feels like Christmas right now, Star Wars fans, because D23 was awesome. What's up, guys? Micro Guy Love Star Wars here. Today we're talking about Tales of the Jedi. Now, there were three trailers that came out at D23 yesterday The Mandalorian Season 3, The Andor Show, which is probably the final trailer, and the Tales of the Jedi trailer. So you'd think, oh, Mandalorian, it's the biggest Star Wars show that Star Wars has. So I'm going to make the breakdown for that one first. No. Strangely enough, Tales of the Jedi blew us away. This thing was insane. So if you haven't watched this trailer, it's going to be awesome to watch it for the first time with me. But if you have watched it, I'm going to break it down for you. What's going on in this trailer? Because it jumps around a lot time-wise. And what's going on? And who is this Sith thing that shows up at the end? What is going on? Okay, so if you guys don't know, I'm not going to have much audio for you guys to hear with the trailer. I just don't want to get copyrighted. Disney does not like when you use their noises, so we don't want to get copyrighted and don't want this video to get taken down. But I am going to be breaking it down for you, and I'll put the closed captioning on too. But before we even start this video, we're looking at the official Star Wars YouTube channel right now. 3.9 million subscribers. We're not there yet, but you know, we're getting there. And The Mandalorian Season 3 is the most recent trailer. Now, if you look at the views, it's 2.7 million views, which is a lot, sure. The Ando trailer is the third one in. It is 1.7 views. A lot, again, sure, still the Mandalorian has over 1 million more views, but you look at the Tales of the Jedi, which is right in between the two, and it has 3 million views. Yes, that is a whole lot more than the Andor trailer, but even more than the Mandalorian Season 3 trailer. Again, by far, Disney's most successful TV show. So the fact that an animated show, Tales of the Jedi, has more views than that in the first day is wild. Alright, let's break this thing down. Lucasfilm LTD, all right? At first, you start off with like Ahsoka's grandmother or mother talking. She says, everywhere there is life, and there's some creatures, but you must face death. Now this, all right? This is Padme. Padme Amidala, you know who that is? Yes, mother to Leia and Luke Skywalker, and wife to Anakin Skywalker, a.k.a. Darth Vader. And this is her funeral. This is her. They pretend to make her look pregnant so that Anakin and Palpatine think that the kids died with her, but you must face death. And then you get this first look at Count Dooku, all right? It says honor it, but you don't really see his face yet. And then you see this gigantic saber-toothed looking tiger thing and a very, 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 very young Ahsoka Tano. And it doesn't eat her because she has the force and she can communicate with animals. Not a lot of Jedi actually have this power, Ahsoka being one of them, Ezra Bridger being another. But she doesn't get eaten by the saber tooth tiger, needless to say. And then this person says Ahsoka. Ahsoka is Jedi. And then it cuts to Ahsoka. But, but this is Ahsoka in the first three seasons of the Clone Wars. During season three and season four, she gets a wardrobe change because she wears the exact same clothes in every episode of season one through three. But this is early, early, early on Ahsoka. So this is at the beginning of the Clone Wars. It does jump around a lot, so that's... You gotta really focus. Now this goes to Count Dooku. Now let's rewind that for a quick sec. Hang on. <laughs> Who is this? This is Count Dooku right here. This big la lad right there. This guy's a Twi'lek. No idea who he is, but that's whatever. And this guy standing right next to him, his Qui-Gon Jinn. All right, just keep that in mind. He was his apprentice. Six original shorts. Then you got Anakin Skywalker trying to train Ahsoka Tano. Now this is really cool. This move that Ahsoka's about to make right here is the exact same move that saves her from the clones during Order 66. Did Anakin know that was going to happen? Is that why he's, tra he's training her to get this move down? Who knows? But Anakin's like, you need to protect yourself because I'm not always going to be there to protect you. And that's what happens during Order 66. He's not there. Foreshadowing. Two stories of fate, all right? Now, I do think these stories are connected. I actually do. I think there's a reason why we're getting an Ahsoka Tano three-episode arc and a Count Dooku three-episode arc. But Dooku is talking to this guy that we don't yet know who is and says, I want to bring peace and order. Of course, they always do. To the galaxy, again, a shot of him and Qui-Gon fighting against some 
marauders. We don't really know. And he, and again, Qui-Gon right there tells Dooku to stop. He says, Master, stop, please. And again, Dooku's off the hinges. We know that Dooku was a Jedi and turns to the dark side, but always, from the beginning, he was off his hinges. He's always just been a guy who's going to go do whatever he wants and do what has to be done. And he forces Qui-Gon out of the way. One destiny. All right, he's talking about him only being his pad one. And then you see Mace Windu. Mace Windu fighting alongside Count Dooku, both Jedi at the time. This is so cool to see this at all. Even in animation, it's awesome. There's a reason why this is the most viewed video of the three trailers. Anakin says again, Ahsoka's tr training with the move that she saves her during Order 66. Again, 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 again. Anakin's getting mad. This this show does seem to have a little of a darker tone. Again, a good look at, at a, a nice, handsome Count Dooku right there. <laughs> then you got him and Mace fighting together. Mace dips. He's like, "This this is no good. All right, I'm I'm out of here. We're we're trapped." And Dooku's like, "No, I'm fighting this thing out." And and this just proves how good Count Dooku. All right, a lot of people don't understand this because Count Dooku's only in Episode Two and Episode Three, and he gets bested in Episode Three by Anakin, and his head gets chopped off. But that was just because that was Palpatine's plan. Count Dooku went in there just toying with Anakin, and Anakin got the upper hand. And then when Palpatine says, "Kill him now." Dooku looks up at him like, what did you just say? And then he chops off his head. Dooku is one of the best lightsaber fighters ever in Star Wars ever. He's one of the best combat ready Jedis ever. And then he turns to the dark side and becomes one of the best fighters for the dark side. He chops off Anakin's arm and beats Obi-Wan twice in the prequels. He also even bests Master Yoda in episode two. Not a lot of people even realize that, but he gets away. He gets away from Master Yoda. So yeah, Dooku is quite a very talented swordsman. So he stays and fights. Mace comes back to help and he has to stop him again. Qui-Gon stopped him earlier. Now Mace is stopping him now. There's clearly a lot going on with Dooku. He is off the hinges. So then you get a shot of Dooku here. Streaming October 26th. All right, now this is cool. It's all coming out at once on October 26th. So streaming October 26th. Then you get a couple brief looks of just tiny clips, but the first one there was was Ahsoka riding that same saber tooth. If I can get to it, watch closely. Ahsoka riding the saber tooth. All right, then you get Bail Organa, so that's just whatever. He'll be in the show. Oh, hang on. Give me a sec. There it is. Ahsoka Tano at Padme Amidala's funeral. Now, not the safest place to really be because there's probably Imperial guards all over the place watching this funeral, but Ahsoka had to be there because she was her friend and her master's wife. So she kind of, sort of had to be there, but it is now confirmed in canon that Ahsoka Tano was at Padme's funeral. So pretty wild. Only on Disney+, Plus, of course, because right now Star Wars is living on Disney+. Plus. Ahsoka Tano says, I'm tired of fighting. You get a good look at Coruscant here. And then you get, oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, you got Obi-Wan with the mullet. You got Obi-Wan in, in animation with the mullet. Let's go. And he's standing next to Yoda. There's a funeral here. Now, we don't know who this funeral is for. Could be one of two people, I think. Maybe you could even zoom in on that. Somebody in the comments, zoom in on that. You might actually be able to see who's in that. But I think it's either Yaddle, who is the only other of Yoda's species, who we're going to see later in this trailer fight Count Dooku, or I think it could be Sifo Dyas. Now we know Sifo Dyas is the guy who orders for the clone army to be made because he saw that Order 66 was going to happen. He had visions of it, and he went to Kamino and made an army for the Republic. So there's more shots of them at that funeral, and then there's this. Somebody with a red lightsaber. Now let's talk about this, because who is this? Now, I think that that guy with the red lightsaber is going to be the key to connecting the two stories this guy right here oh whoop not captain rex sorry buddy we're gonna go back to this guy so this guy right here he's got this nice double bladed lightsaber very similar to the inquisitor's lightsaber because yes in fact this guy is an inquisitor rumor has it now this has yet to be confirmed and it probably won't be confirmed until we've watched the show ourselves 
but this could be the Inquisitor that is in the Ahsoka Tano novel. There is an Ahsoka novel, and this Inquisitor is in it. If you remember, at the end of Clone Wars Season 7, she drops her lightsaber on that planet where she buries all the clones, and Darth Vader comes and finds that lightsaber. So she doesn't have a lightsaber right now. So where does she get the lightsabers that she has in Star Wars Rebels and in The Mandalorian? She gets them from an Inquisitor that she bests, and then she purifies the crystal. So red lightsabers are red because they get bled by the Sith who use them. That's why in this trailer, Count Dooku has the same bent lightsaber hilt that he has in the prequels because it's the same lightsaber. He just bleeds the crystal red. So Ahsoka Tano does the exact opposite, purifies the crystal and makes them white. Now, is this the lightsaber? If I zoom in on this, it does not really look like Ahsoka Tano's lightsaber, so maybe it's not, but that's how the novel goes. So this guy's going to be awesome. You get Rex, which is cool. All right, here it is. Yaddle versus Count Dooku. Now, why is this important? Yaddle is not in episode two. She is in episode one. She dies at some point. Now, there is no canon death for Yaddle. Is Dooku going to be the canon death for Yaddle? Is Dooku falling to the dark side and Yaddle catches on to it and he has to kill her? I think that's what's going on here. Again, can't confirm or deny any of this, just speculation until the show comes out. But that's what I think is going on here. I think this is a battle to the death right here and you're going to see Yaddle's death. Because again, she's not in episode 2. Now you got a bunch of cool scenes with Mace Windu and Dooku. And then this guy. It even says right there, Inquisitor. More evidence to believe that it's the Inquisitor from the Ahsoka Tano novel. And he says, who might you be? And talking to Ahsoka. And again, we have to preface this. This is Ahsoka Tano after the Clone Wars Season 7. The timeline is jumping all over the place here. For the most part, I think the Count Dooku stuff takes place at one time. But the Ahsoka stuff, we just saw her training session with Anakin is at the beginning of the Clone Wars. Now this is after the Clone Wars Season 7. And the way you're going to be able to determine that in the show, I really hope that they make it easy, but with Ahsoka's Leku. Now Ahsoka's Leku have stuff on them all the time. If you look here, it has this uh, leather strap here. Now this is post Season 7 of the Clone Wars because that's what she had on in the Season 7 of the Clone Wars. When she has that like jewelry thing going down in the middle, that's at the beginning of the Clone Wars. So that's kind of how you're going to tell with, with Ahsoka where they're at, especially in this trailer. Tales of the Jedi. That's it. That's the trailer. Again, unbelievable. A Sith Inquisitor, Count Dooku, young Qui-Gon Jinn, young Mace Windu, Yadel versus Dooku. It doesn't get much better than this. There is a reason. There is a reason. Let's go back to it. There is a reason that if you go to the videos on the official Star Wars YouTube channel, that Tales of the Jedi trailer has more views than both the Mandalorian and the Andor trailer. Now that's wild. I never thought I'd be saying that on video right now, that the Mandalorian season three trailer has less views than an animated Dave Filoni Tales of the Jedi. Now, what does this tell us? This tells us that Dave Filoni should be in charge of everything. Everything he touches with Star Wars turns to gold. You look at the Mandalorian. Yes, I know the Mandalorian is a 50-50 effort with Jon Favreau and a lot of other producers and directors. But again, touched by Dave Filoni. You watch the Ahsoka episode in season two of The Mandalorian, that's all Dave Filoni, and it is a masterpiece. You look at The Bad Batch, you look at all seven seasons of The Clone Wars, you look at all four seasons of Star Wars Rebels, everything he touches is gold. If he's touching every project, even in a very small way, he's going to make that big difference from a lot of people complaining, a lot of fans complaining about what's going on in the show, and a lot of fans loving it, and that kind of stuff gets more views. You look at the Tales of the Jedi, it gets more views than the Andor trailer. Why? Because people are more excited for a Tales of the Jedi animated show just because it's Dave Filoni animating it than an Andor show, which covers the Empire, the Rebellion, the main topics of Star Wars. And yet an animated show made by Dave Filoni outviews it. This doesn't mean that the Andor show is going to be bad. This doesn't mean that the Mandalorian is going to be worse than the Tales of Jedi. 
This just means that Dave Filoni needs to be in charge of more things. So tell me what you think in the comments below about the Tales of the Jedi. Was it your favorite trailer or did you like the other two trailers too? Because I'm going to be breaking down those trailers just in separate videos. Smash like if you like this video, hit subscribe and hit that bell so you get notified every time I post a video and my pretty face will show up in the recommended feed of yours. D23 was such a great sign for Star Wars fans after a May the 4th that wasn't a lot of announcements, after a Star Wars celebration that really wasn't that many announcements, after Marvel blowing it up at S San Diego Comic Con with an insane amount of announcements, Star Wars fans were really itching for something good and Star Wars delivered. And it's good to be a Star Wars fan when Star Wars is delivering. If you want to talk Star Wars with some Star Wars nerdy people, there is a link in the description below to a Discord called The People Who Love Star Wars. And may the Force be with you. Always.